Welcome everyone to the 9 a.m. Hour of Power celebration service. Would you stand with us? Oh, I'm feeling so much better as that gospel song says, since I have laid my burden down. How many by the raising of a hand could say he's a burden bearing Jesus? Yes, he is. He'll take your burdens if you'll leave them to the Lord today. Our theme for today is this. We serve a faithful God. How many by the raising of a hand could say, Pastor, we definitely serve a faithful God. That's why I'm still here today. That's why I'm in the house of the Lord, because we serve a faithful God. I want to ask another question. How many by the raising of a hand could say, Jesus is a miracle Jesus? Did he ever give you a miracle? I'm talking not only to you, but the many that are watching online right now, raise your hand in your house and he's a miracle Jesus. I want you to turn to somebody and say, God has a blessing with your name on it. Come on, do it. I want, want to make sure we have a level of expectancy in here. I didn't come in here to do church today. I came in here to have a touch of Jesus. Come on, say amen. There's a difference. Oh, hallelujah. Praise him, somebody. Somebody watching right now. God is getting you ready for a miracle right now. God is getting you ready for a turnaround in your life. Now, prayer changes things. I grew up hearing that in church. Today, maybe you need prayer. I just hugged one of the sisters in the church. She's, I call her the other walking miracle around here. God got her through that brain surgery and I told her she looks well, looks like it never even happened. Give God a shout. She's right in the service right now. But I remember when it was touch and go. But if she walked up here, you'd never know it. Why? Because God answers prayer. Can we pray for you? We would love to pray for you today. We can get your prayer requests. Those of you first watching online, go to Faith City Family Church Facebook to the send message or comment section. And our team will be looking for your prayer requests. And those in the church... You just feel right at home to walk on up to the prayer table to the left of the altar and Sister Cindy and the team there will get your prayer request. Would you stretch your hand out to me right now? We're going to get ready for something good. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I know that uh, there are people today walking through the valley of whatever. Some might be the shadow of death. Other might be, Lord, sickness family issues don't know what to do but father i'm glad we know what to do because david said i will look up into the hills from whence cometh my help my help cometh from the lord who made the heavens and the earth so father we pray for your miracle power to be released not only in this service here in this room but in every home that is watching Every person that is viewing right now, we pray that God would give you a special touch, a special blessing in the mighty name of Jesus. Why? Because he's able. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to declare we have a God is able mindset. Somebody say that after me. Say, I have a God is able mindset. I have a God is able. Father, I look around here. I see miracles. Lord, I thank you. Jewel is blessed today, Lord, to be in church with her family. Lord, she's out of the hospital. God, you're so good. So, Lord, we thank you for miracles, signs, and wonders. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Would it be all right if we put our hands together, give the Lord a loud praise? Come on. Welcome, everybody. Give them a praise to the hour. A power, yes, Lord. Jesus. Yes, God. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. And I'm so glad.
above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nations. Come on, do it again. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. Glory above the nation. Let's say the Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nation. Come on, give God the highest praise, knowledge in your moments. And all the people say, Hallelujah. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. Come on, say it. The Lord is high above the nation. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. Oh, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. Come on, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And his glory above the nation. Give God the highest praise and knowledge in the wind and all the people sing Hallelujah, 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 the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nation. One more time. The Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nation. And the glory above Come on, the Lord is high above the heavens. The Lord is high above the heavens. And the glory above the nation. And the glory above Oh, give God the highest praise and knowledge to him always. And all the people say,
Everybody put your hand together. Give God your best shout. I said, somebody put up a shout in here. My goodness, how can you not shout? God is so good. Oh, you can do a little bit better than that, I think. How many are glad you're alive today and you, you're breathing? How many thank God you're in your right mind? Come on. How many thank God you got a second chance? Oh, come on, give a Holy Ghost shout right now. Why don't you make the devil mad and give God a Holy Ghost shout? Somebody shout hallelujah. 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 Now give him another hand praise. The devil came to the wrong church. I said the devil came to the wrong church this morning. He's not going to get anywhere. I said he's not going to get anywhere because our mind is made up and our foot's on the rock. We're going to trust Jesus. Oh, thank the Lord, thank the Lord, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Well, I think I saw the usher open up the back door to the church, and the devil ran out on that last shout. He said, let me go see if I can find a dead church this morning where they're dead, and the pastor, the sermon's as dead as the last year's bird's nest. But friend, when you come in here, we're going to have Holy Ghost time. We're going to lift up Jesus. We're, we're going to give God a loud. Come praise him one more time now. Somebody said he seemed like he wants to praise God because God is a good God. Look at somebody say, he's a good God. Yes, he is. All right. Do you need a miracle today? I know a man who can. And his name is J-E-S-U-S. I thank God for the doctors and the nurses and the hospitals, but I still thank God for the great physician, hallelujah, who's the miracle worker, the blind man healer, the sea walker, thank, and the dead man raiser. If you need a miracle, just raise your hand up right now, signifying that you believe. See, when you raise up your hand, now God's watching, but the devil's watching. Did you? The devil's all, he can't read your mind, but he'll watch you, see. My hand is up. Lord, I need a miracle today. Lord, I need you to do some things that I can't do in my skill set, my education, whatever it might be, whatever assets God gave me. There's some things I cannot do on my own. I need Jesus today. Yes. Many of you watching right now, I believe your hand's going up right now because you need the Lord to do what no other power can do. Got any rivers you think are uncrossable? Got any mountains you cannot tunnel through? God specializes in things that are impossible. And he can do what no other power can do. If you need a miracle today and you're here in the church, I want you to take the walk of faith. Walk down this aisle, come up to the cross, and then we're going to call on Jesus. You need a miracle, I want you to take the faith walk right now. Meet me right here. And just stand here, and you're going to stand in front of that cross and say, you know, I believe what Jesus did on the cross. That's what I need. He took my sickness. He took my pain. He took my suffering. He took my drama. He took my emotional issues. He took all of it. So I'm going to bring it to Jesus today. You see, sometimes we... Bring it to everybody else. And I believe God puts people in our lives to help us. But whatever you're going through, take it first to Jesus today. Is that all right? I said, take it first to the master and let him know that you need a miracle. Anybody else? Now, maybe you're doing great, but somebody in your family, somebody in your home, it's somebody you're working with in the neighborhood. It's just not going all that well. Why don't you walk up for them right now? Take the walk of faith. In the name of Jesus, yes, here come some others. I'm going to come up and walk. I'm going to walk up there from my child, from my grandchildren. I'm going to walk by faith. 
Because I need a turnaround miracle today. My house needs a turnaround miracle. I might be doing all right, but there's someone on my heart today. Here's another walking miracle. Brother Lou, look at you walking, man, walking by yourself. The devil tried to take him out, but look at Lou walking up here right now. The devil is a liar. I mean, I remember it was a couple years ago. We didn't know if Lou would be able to walk. Look at that. But see what God does? If you don't give up, but you look up, it'll be all right. We're going to get ready to pray. And I want you to stretch your hand out to me right now. Oh, Jesus. Many of you watching right now, stretch those hands out just like if you were in the room. Because really, we are all together in our faith. Now, Father, in the name of Jesus, there's some tough cases. We can't get it done, but God, you know how to get it done. First, we deal with, Lord, the condition of the emotions today because when your mind is, is upset and when your thoughts are going in nine different ways and when the mind needs some regulating, God, that's what's first because when your mind's not right, you're not right. And I pray you would give peace that passes all understanding right now. I pray against overthinking. Where did that come from? Well, I pray I bind overthinking in the name of Jesus. They say, psychologists say that overthinking is one of the top reasons of unhappiness in the world. We just keep on and on in a vicious cycle. Friend, you got to put it in the hands of God. Listen, you can't change people, but God can change them. Turn it over to Jesus right now. Lord, we pray for emotional healing all over this place. And Everybody that's watching right now in the name of Jesus and Father in Jesus' name, we're praying for physical healing. Father, we rebuke every disease. We rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. We rebuke uh, uh, arthritis. We uh, rebuke a uh, Crohn's disease. Uh, we rebuke glaucoma in the name of Jesus. Tinnitus, we rebuke that as well. We rebuke every disease that has a name because there's a name that is above that name, and that's the name of Jesus. We pray that healing would come to you right now. Did he say right now? I've got right now faith. Not someday, but right now that God is working on your situation in your health. Father, we thank you for miracle healing in the mighty name of Jesus. And we pray that this will be the week of your physical turnaround in the name of Jesus. We want to pray for things going on in the family. Because, hey, every family's got something going on because a family consists of people, and people are imperfect. Father, we pray for peace in the family in the name of Jesus right now. Oh, we bind the devil in Jesus' name. And you know, getting near the holidays, I feel led to pray for household salvation right now. If you've got relatives that need to come to Christ, just raise your hand up. Just be, and Father, we're going to believe for a household salvation season between Thanksgiving and Christmas. Oh, God, they're going to listen. The uncles, the aunts, the nieces, the nephews, uh, the spouses. Oh, God, the grandchildren. God, we're believing for a household salvation turnaround in Jesus' name we pray i feel led to ask you to raise up your hand and praise god in advance for what he's doing right now in the emotions in the physical healing in the family and listen whatever else you may need god we're lifting it up to you right now that's right while you're watching just praise him in your house wherever you are give god glory and praise oh hallelujah thank you jesus thank you jesus beloved if you'll stay right there i believe we have some online requests and I'm going to ask one of our dear brothers in the church here if he would bring them right now. Hallelujah. Brother, would you get the anointing oil? And we're going to have a prayer for these urgent requests. Listen to this. My message today is the power of waiting on God. And she said, my name is Mildred. I have been, note the word, waiting and praying for my own place for five years. I finally got my prayer answered, and I got my own place. Now, somebody ought to give it a five years, 60 months. But if you'll wait on God, I want to ask you, my brother, to bring that anointing oil. and Just lay it on the top. Make the sign of the cross, if you would, on there. Thank you, sir. 
This man helping me is a, is a walking miracle. This man is a walking miracle. He could have been dead. The life he was living, give him a praise God. But am I right, brother? But Jesus saved your soul. He gave you another chance. He got you off the wrong path. Got you on the right path. Come on, give a shout right now. See, God can save anybody. Now him and his family are in the church. He's helping Brother Harmon. Would you stretch your hands out right now? Miracle power. Father, in the name of Jesus, we are praying, oh God, for your miracle power to be released for every online request today. And for everyone that is watching, we look in these cameras and we rebuke every disease in your body. We take authority over all works of the devil and we pray that today, not tomorrow, not someday, but we've got right now faith that God will begin to work on the matter right now. Now, you may not see the fruition of it today, but we believe it's getting in the process right now. Hallelujah. So, Father, we believe for healing, deliverance, and miracles for every one of these online requests we pray at the 9 a.m. hour of power. And, Father, we pray for miracles all over this online family. I feel that right now, somebody with cancer, you're watching, stretch your hand out to the screen right now. We rebuke every cancer cell in your body. We are believing for miracle turnarounds in the name of Jesus that God is handling all of it in Jesus name we pray hallelujah 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 and now for the greatest miracle of all what's that greatest miracle it's when somebody who is lost finds Jesus as their Savior I'm so glad the Lord didn't make it complicated to get saved Sometimes people get so religious, it's almost like God is unapproachable. But how many know he'll take you in the shape you're in? How many by the raising of a hand can say he took you in the condition that you were in when you called on him? Maybe you were all sideways, but you called on Jesus and he said, that's all right. I'm going to save you right now if you need Christ as your Savior. You see, the Bible teaches we're on either one of two roads. We're on the road to heaven or we're on the road to hell. There's no middle ground. And if you don't have Jesus in your heart, you really can't say that you're on your way to heaven. But if you'll receive him as your savior, if you'll do what you're seeing on these screens, on your screens right now, whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you'll call on him, he will save you right now. Can we pray this prayer together? I always ask you to help because it helps somebody else. Maybe in the sanctuary here that feels a little nervous. They're a little uncomfortable. They've never done it before. And many of you watching, we're going to pray it with you because, listen, there's enough hell in this life without dying and going there. It doesn't even make a lick of sense. Go to heaven and have some heaven on this earth while you can. Are you ready? Come on. Would you pray this prayer with me? Would you close your eyes right now and just pray it with me? Come on, shout and say, Lord, I believe that 2,000 years ago, a miracle happened. You were born of a virgin. And then at the age of 33, you died on the cross for me. I don't want to go to hell for anybody, for anything makes no sense to me so right now i'll make up my mind i confess my sin i ask for forgiveness and i ask you to wash my sin away to come into my life save me jesus save my soul right now in jesus name and by faith i call it done if you believe that happened in your life, if you would raise up your hand and look up to the sky and thank him yourself. Brother, you could help me just a little there. And come on, just look up to the heaven and, and just say, Lord, I want to thank you. I, thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I, I can't save me. This church can't save me. No preacher can save me. But Lord, I called on you and you saved me. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. The Bible said we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and by the words of our testimony. Today, I want to encourage you 
to give a quick little testimony to someone, I want you to go up to four or five people and say, we serve a mighty Jesus. It's that simple. Come on, you're testifying. Tell four or five people, we serve a mighty Jesus. We serve a mighty, a mighty Jesus. We serve a mighty Jesus. Oh, yes, let the world know that we serve a mighty Jesus. Brother, so glad to see you in church again. Love you much, man. God bless you. We serve a mighty Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We serve a mighty Jesus. Oh, thank you, Lord. God is an able God. Somebody that's fighting for your life, you've got to hear this miracle word, praise word. It says, from a teenage mother to a high school dropout, I received my GED in 2014. And I found out in 2018 I had a brain tumor. In that moment, I realized I was no longer in control. I started my journey in nursing school in 2019. Although I was tested many times during my journey and wanted to quit many times, I kept my feet on solid ground. I want to thank God that four years later today, on the 17th of November, I can say, I can say that only with God I did this, but I am now a registered nurse. Wow. Going to correctional nursing. Thank God and everyone who prayed for me. I am tumor free. Now, Ashley, you got to help somebody. I want you to stand up, Ashley. I want you to see the young lady who wrote this. She came to church with her mother. Can somebody give a shout right now? She came up out of a pit, but she got her high school diploma, fought through cancer, and now she is a registered nurse. Oh, somebody give a shout. That's what I call tenacity. That's what I call a mighty God. Come on, praise the Lord with her. If God did it for her, God can do it for you. We're proud of her. Pull herself up. And God made a way. Yes, he did. Amen. Ashley, keep on keeping on, all right? I'm going to tell you right now. I'm about to jump off this platform and do a Jericho loop around this place. I just might do it now. Don't cross your eyes at me if I do it. I might grab you and run you around with me. Come, come on. Come, come, say amen, somebody. Don't cross your eyes at me. How many believe when you have church, you need to have church? Don't be patty caking with this. Hey, can we have one more? Look, come on. Give Ashley one more shout right now, and I promise I'll move on. Would it be all right? I said, would it be all right? One more shout. Oh, Ashley, stand up one more time, honey, for Jesus. Somebody, you felt like giving up. Look at Ashley. Look up and don't give up. We serve a mighty God. Well, hallelujah. God's got a miracle with your name on it. Just got to hang in there. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. Say God is good all the time. Say God is good the time yes he is hallelujah is it all right if the pastor got a praise up in him today is that all right i had to praise god just a little bit more because he's been so good to me does somebody want to praise him another 15 seconds you won't interrupt my service you won't interrupt my day maybe you think you need to praise him a little bit more it won't upset me for five seconds Thank you, Jesus. Well, hallelujah. Oh, my, somebody getting a miracle right now. You see, when you praise God, the miracles will happen. Thank you, Jesus. 
Somebody getting a turnaround right now. But you said, I'm going to praise God. I'm not going to have a pity party. I'm going to have me a praise party. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, thank God, thank God. Well, hallelujah. Brother Josh, I feel the Holy Ghost. God is real. Somebody take your hand and throw some blessings out to somebody else. You want to be blessed? Bless somebody else. Well, thank you, Jesus. Oh, you felt like giving up when you came to church. But you're not going to give up anymore. You're going to make it to the finish line. Somebody say, I'm on my way to the finish line. Hallelujah. I'm going to go all the way. Yes, Lord, I'm not giving up. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Would you clap your hand one more time for the Lord? All right. Well, Ashley, you stirred it up in here today. You stirred it on up. Praise God from a dropout to a registered nurse. Can I say that one more time, Ali? Is that all right with you? From a dropout to a registered nurse. Don't tell me God can't get you on the other side. Yes, he will. I better be quiet before somebody else jumps up, Brother Ron. You never know around here. Hallelujah. I might grab Serena and run seven times around the church, but I'll have mercy on her today. She said, thank you. Amen. Well, praise the Lord, we come. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You want to praise him, it's all right. Those of you watching online, we got a few out here still shouting a little bit. So I thought I'd better let them just shout a little bit more. Yes. Brother Rob, 30 seconds. 30 seconds of praise. And then we're going to have to keep it moving because it's baptism day. Twenty more seconds. Fifteen more seconds. Five more seconds. All right, brothers, thank you. Amen. All right. You may be seated if you can. It's baptism Sunday. So I got to keep it moving just a little bit. Or we may not get out of here to 12 noon. You know, back in the day, they'd have church like that. Come on, talk to me now. Yeah, they, they didn't worry about the time. You, you, get in, you get in enough trouble, you won't worry about the time. You'll stay all day. Come on, talk to me. You run up to the altar, pray, want the pastor to anoint you with oil. But we're going to try to stay on track here today. So uh, we're coming to that point of the service where we receive the opportunity to give to the Lord's work. Do you count it a privilege like I do to give to the Lord's work? to spread the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, it truly is an honor. And the Bible teaches us that every one of us as followers of Christ have been given the responsibility to support the work of the Lord through our tithes and our special outreach offerings. Now, the Bible says clearly in Malachi chapter 3, and I bring it up on the screens for you, that God does not want every dime in our pocket but he does want his peace. He wants his peace, his portion of the money he got us up out of bed. He gave us health and a right mind to make. How many know you didn't make that money by yourself? I hope you're humble enough to raise your hand and say, I didn't make all that money by myself. God helped me make it. Just like he helped Ashley go from a dropout to a nurse. God helped that happen. So here's what God said. Bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now, herewith says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. Tithe means this. I look at that check. I say, God, I didn't make that by myself. If I was sick and I couldn't show up, 
what would I do? God, I'm glad to pay my tithes. And that's that 10% of what the Lord helped you make in the last seven days. I want to share something very quickly here before I call on our ushers. As we are in the uh, theme of the church, we have a theme for the fall. It's called the Fall Harvest of Salvation. I wanted to share with you very br briefly here, and I'm so excited about it, that God has opened up a tremendous door, an opportunity to help families in our region who need help in order to be able to have anything on the table for Thanksgiving. Brother Harmon, he said to me, quote, he said, Pastor Hare, there's a large number of families in our community who need some serious help for them and their children to have any Thanksgiving at all. He said, Pastor, could we do a day of hope Thanksgiving outreach, if we can, I promise you we'll reach hundreds of families with the gospel message this Thanksgiving season. I said to Brother Harmon, I said, Brother, this is a great opportunity. This is a great idea, but we don't have a lot of time because next Sunday is Thanksgiving Sunday and then a few days after that. But he said, you know what? We can do it. He said, We've got great volunteers. We can pull this off. And he said, Pastor, we'll set that big outreach up in the center of the city. He said, we'll put crosses on the corner. He said, we'll bring the stage that we made for you at the last outreach. And he said, I'll put a couple crosses around you. And you get up on that stage with the sound system. And before the folks get turkeys and they get different things, he said, you preach the gospel of Jesus Christ and you get them saved, and then make sure you let the people know that everything they receive today is from Jesus. I said, you know, that sounds like a plan to me. To, you know, I love preaching on the street corner. How many know we need preachers on the street corners like they used to be back in the day? Everybody's in the building, but we got to get out where the lost people are. Last time I preached out there, I remember one man came up, he was intoxicated, came right to the edge of that little stage, and, and, and I reached out and I grabbed his hand. Somebody else said, pray for me, I, I got a cocaine addiction. How many believe if Jesus had a church, he'd take it to the streets? Can I hear an amen from someone? And so what is the plan if we're able to do it? The plan would be this, to give out Thanksgiving boxes of hope, turkeys, other items, all those fixings, the dry goods that can go along with it, and to help make sure these families lived in these super tough areas will be able to have Thanksgiving. So the Day of Hope Outreach is more than just giving stuff away, and that's good. But how many know you can just give something away and somebody die and go to hell and lose their soul? How many believe you need to get them saved? Come on, give me some loud amens. You need to get the whole package. And, and, and so today, we're praying for really two things, three things for an all-time Sunday here and the many of you watching right now because the need is so absolutely great. Brother Leonard, raise your hand. Are you able to play that quick little video so people can get an idea of the, of the homeless facility. Stand up or raise your hand, I can't. Are you able to do it? All right, hit the play button if you're able to do it right now, because some people may not be able to get their head around what I'm saying, especially the new folks that are watching. See, we're just, we're always doing outreaches. We're on the outside, and there's our outreach director, and there's some other men in the church giving testimonies out there. And some of them got real raw stories of how they were lost in sin and living for the devil. Had a few women in the church that were living some rough lives back in the day. And, but bags and bags, sea of free groceries and food, all from Jesus. But the thing is this, not only free coats and different things, whenever we do an outreach, we're planning if the Lord would provide, we're planning to have shoes and different things that people need. But I promise you something, when you go, the crowds will come. Even after we preach the gospel, they'll come up. They just still, they stare at the cross. Who goes out and takes a cross somewhere? Whenever we went out somewhere, I never saw a cross there before we got it. There, 
people are mesmerized, even the kids, by the cross. And so this Thanksgiving season, Brother Harmon said, God has opened up a door. If we can have the resources to do this, we're going to go out there and do it on Saturday, November 23rd. That would be, can you believe it? Next Saturday. But we could do this. And I believe when you and me are sitting down on Thanksgiving at the table, having our Thanksgiving, how many know it would be a good feeling to know you helped somebody else? Come on, talk to me, church. You help somebody else have a Thanksgiving. While you're saying they're past the cranberry sauce, I'll take a second on the dressing right now and don't take all the gravy. I need a little bit of that. Amen. You know that you helped somebody else. Today in this service, I'm trusting God. I'll move very quickly. For an all-time service today, 10 people, really nine, that with the pastor, because I'm a sower, I'm not rich, but I'm blessed because I've always, I always want to help people and I've always been in outreach all my life. How many, uh, nine others would say, I'll sow $100 for the, for the food because we have to buy the food. We're going to have to buy a bunch of food. Who will raise your hand right now and join me? I'll be the first. There's me and then there's two and there's three and there's four and there's five and there's six and there's seven. There's eight. Praise God. We get overflow. We can need it. There's nine. Who else? Yes, I'll help. I'll help. I'll help give some. There's another one. There's 10. So that the Brother Harmon and the women of the church can go shopping. There's 11. Praise God. Praise God. If there's another one, 12. Jesus had 12 disciples. Praise God. Listen, we're willing to do it. We're willing to do it. And we can do it. Now, maybe you can. There's another hand. Am I correct? Yes. Dear sister, God bless you. Amen. Amen. There's another hand over there. Pastor, I'm able to help on this. And another one, the usher said, on the front. Thank you, my brother. God bless you. But if you can't do that, don't you dare feel bad. Just do your best. Give your best. Also, we need 10 of you online that can do that $100 and, and do the best you can. And I believe by faith we're going to have one Thanksgiving outreach video that we're going to grieve the devil with. And I can't wait to preach on that corner and hear people say, Jesus, save my soul. Forgive me of my sins. So, Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you today for the opportunity to help others. Lord, I'll never forget. We had an evangelist here years ago. My, my boy, he's an, he was a tremendous evangelist. And he said, what you make happen for others, God will make happen for you. If you help take care of somebody's need, sometime in your life, God's going to send somebody to help take care of your need because you reap what you sow. Father, we pray that everybody here in the church and everybody watching online right now will say, you know what, I like that. So close to Thanksgiving, just before Thanksgiving, people are going to give their time, give of their resources. But most of all, people are going to go from being lost to being saved. For some of them, Lord, some of them have addiction for six, seven years. Some of them are like 35 years old, but their body is going on 70 or 75. Lord, some of them may not be on this earth too long. We pray they will. We got to get them saved. We got to get them saved. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Our rushers are coming right now. We appreciate them so much. Uh, with the envelopes uh, for our wonderful congregation in person. And to those of you that are watching the online church, we want to share with you the different ways to give. So usher, share them if you would. We need a big miracle today. You can text to give. And even if you're in church, you can use these options, of course. You can text to give at 302-455-2820. It's all safe and secure. You can use the Venmo I item as well, application. Just use A at FC1212. You can download the app of the church, Faith City Family Church. Or you can go to the website, faithcitynow.com. Also, we have other giving options. We have the mail, the U.S. mail, if you'd like, as some use. 179 Stanton Christiana Road, Newark, Delaware, 19702. We also have PayPal. You can scan that as well whatever works best for you and so just wanted to share all these different giving options with you today let's believe 
that we're going to have the resources to bless people, to have a thanksgiving, and it'll all be from Jesus. God bless you to every one of you here. Thank you so very much. And to the many of you that are watching right now, thank you as well. Together, we're changing lives. Amen. Amen.
somebody say amen. Oh, isn't God good? Good to be in the presence of the Lord together. I want to thank everybody once again for helping us. And don't have a lot of time to get this out this one together, this outreach, but I believe the good Lord's going to help us and we're going to get it done. And many souls will come to Christ on Thanksgiving season. As our ushers come, Father, we thank you today. Lord, I remember my dear great-grandmother Hare, who lived in Baltimore, Maryland. She had an old saying in her Bible. My dad used to preach it in his sermon sometimes, and it was in there, only one life will soon be passed. Only what's done for Christ will last. So, Lord, we're thankful that every tithe we give, every special offering we give, it's being recorded in heaven right now. Here and online, God, so we're believing for a mighty response. People saying, I'm going to share because I know I'll be blessed. We dedicate it in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. Ushers, thank you, and God bless you as you wait on us. And then when the ushers are through, I might ask them to help me one more time. But I also want to make some announcements here that next Sunday, very special Sunday, it is Thanksgiving Sunday and Holy Communion Day as we have a special emphasis on thankfulness and Holy Communion. I hope you'll bring the whole family, bring your friends, those of you who attend church online, just make sure you have something of bread or some kind of juice for your Holy Communion. Also, we want to make sure everybody knows that today at 1245, the Delaware Valley Celebration Gospel Choir We'll be rehearsing today because they have some special Christmas music they're preparing for. So we need all choir members here that can be here today, 1245 after the second service. They will be rehearsing on the lower level underneath the sanctuary, and uh, we hope you'll come. We always welcome visitors. Sister Serena, would a visitor be all right today? We like to have many because who knows, you may want to be making a joyful noise for the birth of Christ this Christmas season. That's today at 1245. And then also, I want you to join me this Wednesday, 7 p.m., for the Wednesday night virtual Bible study. And we are going to be studying how the Word of God changes us from the inside out. It's only 30 minutes, developing a closer connection with God. We also want to take a moment right now to as our ushers come back up front, and we appreciate our faithful ushers of Faith City Family Church. Give them a hand right now. We do not take them for granted. And we would like to take a moment to recognize any visitors that might be visiting this service right now. In the comfort of your seat, in a moment, we'll ask you to raise your hand. We have a special gift for you today. It's our VIP gift bag. It's a tote bag with gifts for you just because you came. And all you have to do is take a card, fill it out completely, and stop by the visitor's table, and we will take good care of you. So if you are visiting, would you raise your hand up right now in your seat as high as you can so they can see you, and they'll come right to you. They'll run the card right back to you. Amen. There's a visitor over there. Thank God. Can we put our hands together for all visiting today at the first service right here at Faith City Family Church? So we're getting ready right now for baptism because we've got people who have given their life to Jesus Christ and they want to honor the Lord. Come on, give the Lord a loud praise right now. They want to honor the Lord through baptism. Amen. And so we're going to get ready. Brother Harmon and the baptismal team is lining up here. And we have a delegation today of souls that have been saved and want to testify of their faith. Now, when they come up out of that water, we always ask you to give a loud shout and praise because we believe here at Faith City Family Church that when you go down in the water, the old life is gone. And when you come up out of the water, you have been resurrected with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. And how many know that's a big deal, resurrection of a life? And so we want you to make a whole lot of praise and when they come up out of that water. And so we begin right now with our first, a Kiri 
or Carrie Thomas. She is coming at this time. She is coming at this time. Give her a praise the Lord. And as she's coming, she says, I've been through so much the last 19 years of my life. I felt like I was in a war of the world and I couldn't understand why. And I, I, I fell and I, I felt like I was just going down. But I also felt God pulling me closer and closer to him. And one day I made up my mind. I knew I had to change completely and live upright for myself, my children, and my grandson. We're all ready to live upright. Thank you, Jesus. And it says, she says, it's time out with the old and in with the new. How about a praise God for that right now? Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. So, Sister Carrie, God bless you today. We are so proud of you, and we thank God for you. And when you come up out of that water, whatever was, was. Today is the first day of the rest of your life. And so as a sign that you've been saved, your name is in the Lamb's book of life. It is our joy and honor to baptize you in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Ghost. Amen, amen, and amen. Bless the Lord. All right. We have Sister Vonay. Vonay Driver. And we are so grateful for her. Vonay, you look like God is on your side. And your family's here. Uh, the sister. Let's give the family a hand right now. It's a family affair. Praise God. Are you in the... Oh, all right, honey. All right. God bless you. And so... Vone, as a sign that you have given your life to Jesus Christ, that you're not lost, but you have been found, it is our joy to baptize you right now in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Ghost. Amen and amen. Amen. Brother Dwayne Walker, he is 18 years young. How about that, everybody? How about a, for the youth today? 18 years young, and we're proud of him. Brother Dwayne Walker, 18 years. The earlier they get saved, the better. Brother Dwayne, we're proud of you. We love you. We're so glad you make the right choice. And when you come up out of that water, I believe a fresh anointing is coming on your life because we need more young people like you in this world. So as a sign you've been saved, your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. We now get ready to baptize you this very moment in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. Now praise the Lord, Sister Tanya Waters is making her way into the baptismal pool and she writes my name is Tanya and when I when I got older I drifted away from the church but in 2002 my faith was tested and I hit rock bottom when I accepted Jesus Christ though into my life things began to change and I've never looked back I know that Jesus is a way maker and he never makes a mistake. And I will follow him the rest of my life. 
Thank you, Jesus, for loving me. In Jesus' name, amen. Oh, Tanya, we're so proud of you. Give her another praise God right now. So you'd hit rock bottom. But usually, that's where you'll meet Jesus, at the bottom. How many know he's at the top and the bottom? Come on, say amen. And, and so Jesus was at the bottom of her life. And look at you now, blessed. So as a sign that you are a new woman in Christ Jesus, and your name has been written in the Lamb's book of life, and might I add, she is an usher of our church as well. Look what the Lord has done. Hallelujah. It is our joy to baptize you, Tanya, in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Thank the Lord. Oh, thank God. Now we have Brother Andre Jones, affectionately called around the church here. We call him Dre. And let me tell you, Dre, talking about being at the bottom, this brother has been at the bottom of the bottom of the bottom. But he proves to us today, it doesn't matter how low you get, God has the power to pull you up out of a pit and give you a new name written down in glory. Give him a praise God. Dre, we're proud of you, man. We're proud of you. And for you to do this, it encourages a lot of other people. Because we need men as well as women who will say, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, Jesus Christ. And so now, Dre, Andre Jones, it is our pleasure, honor, and blessing to baptize you right now. And we do it in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. When you come up out of that water, we say that you're going to a new level in your walk with God. So we baptize you now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Now coming into the baptismal is Forest Waters, Brother Forest Waters. Man has also been on his journey, but praise God, he chose Jesus. And he said, my past will not be my future. I will not live my life in a rear view mirror, but today is the first day of the rest of my life with Jesus. And so my brother, it is our joy, it is our pleasure, it is our honor as a sign of your faith in Jesus Christ to baptize you on this day in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. And now James Murphy, he is 12 years young. He gave his heart to Jesus Christ. How about a praise God for that? That's mighty young to be getting baptized, and we're proud of him because he, he's discerned. He understands what's going on here. And so my young brother, James, I'm proud of you. We're excited for you because God has a plan and he has a purpose for your life. He feels what I'm saying, I can tell. He's, 
He is totally tuned in. And I'm going to profess and decree and declare that you are going to be a threat to the devil and the kingdom of darkness all the rest of your life. By faith, we declare it in the name of Jesus. So as a sign that you have been saved, my 12-year-old brother James Murphy, and your name has been written in the Lamb's Book of Life, we now baptize you in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Malia Richards is 10 years young. We celebrate her life as well. A young lady saying, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And she affirms her faith as well in baptism. And so, Malia, we're proud of you. Look at that smile. Wow, that's a beautiful smile. Give her another praise the Lord. And I decree that God is going to use you as a mighty vessel for his glory and honor. So as a sign that you have been saved and you've been baptized with your spirit, because see, when you get saved, you receive the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The Trinity comes down into your life. I want to baptize you right now. And we do so remembering this great decision you made in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Vincent Walker is 13 years young. We are blessed today to have a fine representation of youth in this particular baptism service. And today, we are encouraged. And I want to speak to all young people present and watching. We'll be baptizing again. Don't you be ashamed of your faith in Jesus because God will use you in a great way. And so, Brother Vincent, we're proud of you today, sir. You stepped up. You didn't have to get baptized, but you wanted to. You want to do affirm your faith with Jesus. And so I love you, brother. We love you. We're praying for you, man, because we know life is not easy in the world we're living in right now. But with Jesus, we can make it. So as a sign that you have given your life to Jesus Christ, your heart to him, your life to him, and that you are going to serve the Lord, it is our joy, privilege, and with great passion, that we baptize you today in the name of God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Now, everyone, I, I, I want to... I want you to really be in prayer. I'm believing for everybody, say baptism miracle, all right? Say baptism miracle. She says, my name is Angie. I've been battling pancreatic cancer. With the Lord and my family, Lisa Davis. Lisa, God bless you, hon, and your support. My faith has been extra strong. I've only went through remission for three months and was re-diagnosed with liver cancer. I've decided to go through this journey with God and not chemo. Today she wants to be baptized. The medical physicians say that there's nothing more that they can do for Angie, but we know a great physician whose name is Jesus of Nazareth. Can somebody give a shout? 
The doctor said, well, there's no more treatment for you. But praise God, there's a treatment for her right now. And I want us all right now, listen, and I, and, and I want, listen, we want to encourage you. We want to encourage you, Angie. We want you to remember this. Now, you don't have to if you don't want to, but I, I would like to invite the congregation to stand in loving support of this dear woman fighting for her life that the doctor said, we have no more treatments for you. But I want you to stretch your hands out towards her in loving support. Angie, take a look at this. I want you to get this in your mind. Thank God you have that loving family. But you also got this family. People, you don't know their name. But they're going to remember your name and keep on praying for you. And I want you, congregation, to help me baptize her. Brother Josh, I'm going to have the congregation literally do the baptism with me. And so if you will repeat after me very aggressively with faith in your soul, say, Angie, Angie. we love you, we, love you. We, honor you. we honor you, and we praise God for your faith. You are a great role model for us all. And so right now, on your baptism day, we are praying, we are believing, what the doctors can't do, the great physician will do. So right now, we stretch forth our hands. We rebuke cancer in the name of Jesus. Right now, we believe God for a miracle turnaround in Jesus' name. And we believe that with God, nothing is impossible. I want us to raise our hand and give a loud praise Come on, we got to help her out. We got to help this woman out. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We believe. We believe by faith. Hallelujah. That God has a turnaround. In Jesus' name. And so now is a sign of your faith. And I want you to repeat after me. You're going to help baptize her and when the ushers put her down under the water. Can I say this by faith? How many believe it is possible? Now think of those three words. It is possible that she could come up out of that water different than when she went down in it. Do you believe that's possible, Faith City? Those of you watching, do you believe that's possible? That when she goes down in the water, the cells in her body, God could adjust the cell in her body. Oh, come on, give a loud praise right now. Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible. But can you believe? How much somebody shout, I believe. I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. You got to believe when you got nothing else. You got to believe. Thank you, Jesus. I feel the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Glory to somebody give another shout out. He'll seem like the devil. Doesn't like this. Somebody in the church, you got cancer. Somebody watching, you got cancer. It's not over till God says it's done. So believe. Believe. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. My God, she got good, great faith. Yes, Jesus. So now, I want everybody to repeat this after me. Say, Angie, Angie. as a sign of your faith, that you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that Jesus is by your side, he is your healer. He is your deliverer. And he will not forsake you. We baptize you. November 17th, 2024. In the name of God the Father. Jesus the Son. And the Comforter who is the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And amen. 
Come on, praise and saints. Come on, give a shout. Yes, Lord. Come on, give a shout for Angie right now. That God is going to bring her through. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Oh, give the Lord another praise right now. I want her to hear this. When she goes to bed tonight, I want her to know that the church is with her. The church is with her. Come on, clap your hands and shout, we believe. We believe. Clap your hands and shout for Angie. Angie Brown said, I'm not going to let the devil stop me from getting baptized. Yes, Lord. All right, turn to somebody. Say, you can't give in to the devil. Come on, look at somebody. Say, you can't give in to the devil. You got to press on. Somebody say, press on. When all else fails, press on. When the doctor said cancer, press on. When there's no money for the bills, press on. Because God's got the final say on your situation. Hallelujah. I said hallelujah. I'll tell you, Sister Angie done preached a sermon in that baptism. She preached the sermon called Don't Give Up. She preached Galatians chapter 6, verse 9. Don't be weary in your well-doing, for in due season, God's appointed time, you will reap if you faint not. How many are proud of her that she did not faint? Maybe the ushers had to give her extra help, but that's all right because Jesus was helping her down in that water. And we're looking by faith for a great, great report. Hallelujah. Go on and praise one more time. See, seem like a couple of you are getting a blessing right now. Thank you, Jesus. Angie was our illustrated sermon today. Because if she could get up early this morning, get ready for church, have her family and relatives have to assist her into the church building, and then the men have to help her down in that tank, I'm telling you, you're going to make it. She's going to make it in the name of Jesus. A thought here today from the Scripture, the power of waiting on God. I just have to flow here the way the service went. And in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 11, it says, God does everything just right and on time. But people can never completely understand what he's doing. How many know his time is not your time? His clock is not our clock. And that's why the Bible said in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not to your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him. He will direct your path. How many by the raising of a hand could say, I'm waiting for something from God? Raise your hand. I'm waiting on God, Pastor. I don't want to say what it is, but I have been waiting. It's been a while here. The Bible says that when you're waiting on God, it's good to do these things. Number one, we need to remember there's a natural delay between planting and harvesting. Sometimes we plant, we sow a seed, and we don't see the harvest. A month goes by, six months goes by, a year goes by. But the Bible said in Ecclesiastes 3.1, there's a time for everything. And there's a season for every activity under heaven, a time to plant, a time to harvest, a time to scatter, and a time to gather. You planted some seed. Everybody I'm talking to here and watching, you've done some good with your life. Don't give up. Your harvest is on the way. While you're waiting on God, number two, remember there's always an unseen battle going on while we're waiting. The devil's going to try to block your blessing. One of his names is a blessing blocker. But how many know we have a sledgehammer called Jesus Christ, the power in his name? In Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, it says, We are not struggling. Pastor, who am I struggling against? What was the Bible saying? We are not struggling and fighting against human beings, but against evil spiritual forces in the heavenly realm. 
rulers, authorities, powers of darkness. But greater is he that's in you than he that is within the world. The third thing we need to remember when we're waiting on God for something to come through is God is preparing me for his blessing. How many believe that God is preparing you for something really good, better than you ever realized? 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 6 and 7, there is wonderful joy ahead, even though it is necessary for you to endure many trials for a while. These troubles test your faith to show that it is strong and pure, just as fire tests and purifies gold. And your faith is far more precious to God than gold. Number four, while I'm waiting on God, I'm in good company when I'm waiting on God. Hebrews 11, 2, people who lived in the past, some of the greatest heroes of faith, some of the greatest men and women of God, it says people who lived in the past became famous because of their faith. And then finally, number five, what do I do while I'm waiting on God? I need to remember this probably above all else. God always keeps his promises. I hope there's a loud amen on that one. God always keeps his promises. He may not answer it in the specific way that we wanted it or the typ typical package that we were looking for, but God keeps his promises. In Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, God says, At the time I have decided, my words will come true. You can trust what I say about the future. It may take a long time, but keep on waiting. It will happen. Four things to do while you wait, always and forever. A, B, C, and D. While you wait, keep on praying. Next, keep on serving. C, keep on sowing. And D, keep on believing. I believe today that God is more than able to answer your prayers. You may have a, a list longer, longer than an, a, a foot of paper. If you could write 50 things down, you could fill it on up. But how many know God is bigger than a long list on a paper? He can take care of your list. Pastor, I need special prayer today because I'm waiting. I'm waiting on God to come through. And I'm not ashamed to say that I want some more prayer over it. Would you raise your hand up right now? Those of you here and the many of you watching right now, I'm waiting on a certain thing. It's none of my business what it is or, or anybody else's, but hold your hand up high. Remember, the devil's watching. The devil is watching. He's saying, does she have faith? Does he believe? Uh, watch, devil. My hand is up. No matter what you say, no matter how you try to distract me, I'm going to wait on God. My final verse, Lamentation 325, for the Lord is good unto them that wait for him. Father, in the name of Jesus, right now, we're going to keep on praying, keep on serving. We're going to keep on sowing. We're going to keep on believing. We're not going to put our lives on hold while we're waiting for these things. But, Lord, I'm in agreement with my brothers and my sisters here and the many that are watching right now. I agree with you that when God comes through, and remember, when you don't see him working, it doesn't mean he's not working. If you don't feel him working, it doesn't mean he's not working. I pray that God will come through Ephesians 3.20, exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think according to the power that's working in you. And so, devil, you came to the wrong service. We will wait on the Lord because it only takes God a moment. One miracle can change your life. One phone call can change your life. God can do it in a second. And everything changes. So, Lord, we receive this by faith in Jesus' name. Now, I know, beloved, we're just a handful of minutes over time, but how many have enjoyed yourself thus far today? Did you enjoy that? Wasn't that a great baptism today? And how about Angie inspiring us all to not give up and to press on? I debated whether I would go ahead and do this, but... 
I feel prompted in my spirit because we are on a, a limited window of this great opportunity for the ministry here. One of the great and impactful ministries that we have here, we're blessed to have here, is Reach Gospel Radio. Going up in the airwaves 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no telling how many thousands of people are reached every hour of the day. And months ago, by faith, we, we announced that God had opened up the opportunity to increase the coverage of the radio station by a million and a half people. And 